All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all everyone. I hope that my voice is coming good to you. Uh, please let me know in the chat. I can see part of it. Uh, if there is any problem with the broadcast. Um, first of all, uh, I want to say that really I miss you all and I really apologize for not being here uh, for the last week, but uh, it was not really a choice. Uh, the internet was really horrible and I had no choice but to uh, not to be able to do anything. It was really, really slow. Uh, today, our topic uh, about an article published by Muslims and sent to me by one of you, as you see in the front of you on the screen. Uh, Islam is not a race, but singling out community is racism. Actually, I like this, uh, you know, this uh, title. And not only I like it, I want to say thank you for this Abdul who wrote this article. His name is Basit Muhammad. So if Basit Muhammad ever he heard me, I want to say to Mr. Basit, thank you very much. I really agree with you uh, that singling a community is a racism. And here we need to ask the Muslims, when they write articles to defend Islam, do they write it using ink or something else? I mean, how in the world somebody believe in a cult like Islam speaking about singling community? Isn't it Quran saying Jews are bad, Christians are the enemies of Allah, they are the evil doer, they are the wood of the hellfire, they are the most ugly, they are the worst creatures. So how in the world, how dare you to believe in such a cult Yet you are giving us to, to giving us a speeches about singing community. Let us go and take a look and see the hypocrisy of the Muslims. I'm not going to read the whole article because the title is enough for me. You can take your time. We have the, the, the info for the link underneath. You can go ahead and read it. It is very funny and very stupid showing us that Muslims, not only they have a double standard, they teach hypocrisy. Either, either this guy is ignorant about his cult. It's called Islam or he is a liar and he is trying to deceive us to say, oh, we are victims of racism. Islam is a racism religion. Everything in Islam teach to be a racist. And let us read together. As you see, I, I, I make no speeches. I show people what it's written in the Quran. So don't blame me, blame the author. And the author of this book supposedly is Allah. If you do not know Allah, search for him, you will not find an answer because not even a single Muslim can tell us who is Allah. All what they knew is God. Who is this God? They don't know. Have Muhammad ever spoke to him? No. Have he seen him? No. Where the name coming from? They don't know. What Allah means? They have no idea. So now let us go and see. If we uh, try to find how Quran present uh, non-Muslims. I will type the word kuffar. All the verses you see in the front of you is a speaking and singling community. You can pick up any one if you want, you know. All of it is singling community. Actually, Islam singled the whole world to be evil, except the Muslims. Imagine we sing as an example, chapter two, verse number 39. I'm not going right now to the Christians and the Jews and what Islam teach about them, but which is very evil and very hateful. But if we go to, as an example, to chapter two, verse 39, and we click at any Abdul translation, choose your best. And I don't know, like, I don't care. Yusuf Ali, Shakir, Bektal, Tomato, Potato, do your best. All of them, they cannot hide the evil of this cult. So if we go here, we will see. But those who reject faith hmm, and really our signs, they shall be the companion of fire. They shall abate therein. Okay. Are you a singling community now saying that all those who they are not accepting Allah are evil? Yes, this is what you are saying. But this is not really, we can say this is religious. I mean, don't you Christians believe that anyone who don't believe in God, he will not go to heaven? Yes, this is true. But you see, 
Christians teach that God love everybody. Islam teach that God hate everybody unless you become a Muslim. If we go and continue reading, <clears throat> uh, all the verses in front of us, but I'm going to show you some some of the verses, you know. Uh, chapter 2, verse number 89. Chapter 2, verse number 89. Every Muslim, he have to curse us every time he pray. Every time. They refuse to believe in, in it, which is Islam, but the curse of Allah on those without faith. Okay, why you want to put the curse of Allah on those without? You are a single community. You as a Muslim right now, you curse us for no reason because we don't accept Islam. That's all. I mean, have you ever heard of religion? Teaching that I'm going to curse you because you don't accept me? Imagine somebody says to you, hello. And you, he don't want to answer. He don't want to like to say hello to you. Or you say to him, uh, uh, join my club or come to my restaurant. You say, no, I don't want to join your restaurant. And what is the respond? You say, I will curse you. You are cursed. So single in community, Islam single, everybody in the world as evil door, and they are bad people. You can you can go right now to the Quran. <clears throat> And we type, we type the word evil. Just the word evil. All right. And we will see that the word evil appear always uh, speaking about those who they are not Muslims. As an example, chapter 5, verse number 60. Let us see what this chapter is speaking in this verse. As you see, I'm reading Muslim translation, not mine. Those who worship evil. Okay, so now you judge us and you, we are evil and we worship evil. Why? Allah, he make those who worship evil, apes and pigs. Have you ever heard of a single community like this? This, this religion believe that if you don't believe in Allah, you are equal to an animal. And here, literally, Allah saying, supposedly, that those who they don't believe in him, Allah, he transformed them already into apes and swine. Who? Those who worship evil. What kind of cult this cult is? Imagine if the Christians teach in their churches that Muslims are going to be pigs and monkeys. Why? Because they refuse Jesus. So you give us a speech about hate and teaching against Muslims and teaching against Islam, but you yourself in your Quran teaching that we are animals, literally, not metaphorically. And Muslims, as we speak now, they believe that Allah, he transformed a lot of people who don't believe in him or disobey him as pigs and monkeys. And as you see, this is the Quran in front of you. And then he says, they are in the worst of rank. They are the worst of creatures. They are the worst of mankind. And for more astray from even bad. So what does that mean? It means you are the worst of people. You are the curse. That you are cursed. You are evil. You are ugly. You are disgusting. You are no one. You are, a, you, are, you, are, you are a garbage. There's a guy in YouTube. He made a video. It says, what the benefit of an infidel? And he was standing between the bunch of cows. And he is comparing the cows to us. And I don't see any Muslim getting upset. I don't see any Muslim getting upset from Muhammad saying ugly stuff as we see in the front of the Quran. If we continue, the Quran says that they are the worst animals. Chapter 8, verse number 22. Read with me carefully. It says, Inna sharra dawaba in Allahi sum wal bukum alladina la yaqulun. Now, here we can translate this verse literally. And that will make it that the most animals, ugly, evil animals, are the ones who they are mute and uh, deaf. But for sure here there is a religious meaning. It's not about being mute and deaf. No. It is about you don't listen to Islam. So what is that? Let us see. Translation, please. Let us change translation this time. Big tell. 
All of this is about singling community. And here, singling community, you are singling the whole world. You are the one who is making all the world evil and you are the only good person. The worst of beasts in Allah's sight are the deaf and the dumb who have no sense. Sense what? Sense of Islam. They don't believe in Islam. So just because people don't believe in Islam, they are the worst of beasts. We are not a human no more for you. We are beasts. That's why Muslims, they have a duty to fight us and to do jihad because they are killing the beast. We are the beast. And why? Because we refuse to believe in Islam because we are dumb and we are uh, we have no sense and we are deaf. Muhammad, he keeps saying to us, I want to give you 70 versions. I will give you endless penis. But look, you guys, you don't want endless penis. I don't know what's wrong with you. So Allah here is making it clear that the worst. So when a Muslim here read this, what do we believe? The Muslim right away when he see this, he say Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhas, uh, atheists, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, you are a beast. How in the world you make an article about not to single community when you Muslim single the whole world as a word of beast? Shame on you. Hypocrisy is Islam. And Muslims when they make articles, is the same as in the Bible where Jesus said, instead of looking at the little tiny piece of wood in the eye of your brother, what about you see the big wood in your eye? So did you see what you, how your God, Allah, he's single community? It's not community, the whole world is single. And now because of this filthy religion, you hate us. And you consider us beast. And you want to kill us. And we can show you more and more verses. Chapter 8, verse number 55. What this verse saying? Let us see. Please you know, choose a translation you wish. Don't doesn't matter for me. Lu. I like it when Allah He say Lu. Since when Allah He say Lu in Arabic? Is that Lu really, or this is a funny translation? Lu, the worst of beasts for Allah's sight are the ungrateful who who will not believe. So now you as a Muslim, Mister what his name Muhammad Basit. Nice to meet you, Muhammad Basit Muhammad. You when you read this verse. Can you explain to us your feeling toward non-Muslims? When the Quran, do you believe in this verse or not? You will say, yes, sure, I believe in the Quran. Okay. The Quran says we are the worst of beasts. And you are giving me a speech about not to single community. What is our guilt now? The guilt is very clear. We are ungrateful because we don't believe. And because of that, we are the worst of beasts, which means we are the worst of animals. You see the Quran, the translator, he tried to make it uh, uh, nicer. They translate it as beast. The fact is not, doesn't say beast, it says animals. At the web. Uh, so we are the worst of the animals exist in this earth. And we are the worst to who? The worst to Allah, therefore the worst to the Muslims. But you said we should not single community and it's not right to single community you cannot say the whole community is evil this is wrong but this is what you teach in your religion this is what is in your book and in the verses two verses after the quran is saying strike terror in their heart you see here they start to say, strike fear what fear what fear this is a translation it's a terror so now because we don't believe in Allah, you have, your duty is to attack us in the mall, to put a bomb in the mall, to put a bomb in the bus station, to do suicide. And like now Taliban, they are burning schools. Why? Because those are students, they are beasts. Why? Because they are not in the school, they are not teaching Quran. They are not teaching Sharia law, so they are the worst of beasts. And you are in war with them. You see, the Muslims, they always come with their own false explanation for the cult of Islam. They say to you, I can show you in the Quran, it says, fight not those who don't fight you. But, but, but they will not tell you that Muhammad had a stage in Islam. Muhammad, when he was weak, he don't dare to fight even a fly. They broke even his teeth. Muhammad, he was like a puppy who ran away from place to place and he don't have the courage to fight anyone because he was weak. But the second he have an army, he have swords, he cut the head of everybody. So if we go in the Quran right now, uh, we will find as an example, not necessarily, not limited. Why the Muslims have a duty to fight the Christians? 
the Muslim, they will say to you, do you know that the Roman attacked the Muslims? That is a big fat lie. The Roman never attacked the Muslims. Muhammad, he sent the letters to three kings saying, convert or else. You can go and search it right now and go over. Muhammad is the one who waged the war. And Muhammad is the one who prepared a war. If you go in the Quran, before we go to this verse, <clears throat> you will see uh, a verse in the Quran speaking about Muhammad. Uh, complaining that there is one of his men he was hypocrite and why he was hypocrite Muhammad he said to them attack the Romans so we can get the blown diggers and this is chapter 4 verse number 49 chapter 4 verse chapter 9 verse number 49 and, you know because I don't want Muslim to say I'm giving my own false translation we can go to tafsir.com and we can see what really the meaning of this verse so imagine we single community to kill just because they have a blonde girls we single we make war we make war and the purpose is to kidnap women who they are blondy and this is supposedly the religion of the my the mighty god the 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 justice god and the perfect religion of it's called islam here they will give you a little bit of the story, but the fact in Arabic, it says, attack the Roman and get the blondie. You can read here, you will see. One of them who says, grant me leave to stay home and tempt me not. A man saying to Muhammad, tempt me not? What is that? What Muhammad is tempting this man to go to war with? Read carefully. This is the story from the mouth of the Muslims, not the mouth of a Christian prince. I'm just reading for you what is written in the official government website of the King of Jordan. This guy who claimed that he is a from the descendant of Muhammad, and that explains why he is very corrupt. This is revealed about Jad ibn Qais, the hypocrite. He's called hypocrite, imagine, for because of this. This is because when the messenger of Allah bless him and give him peace was preparing the bottle of the book but the bottle of the book why why are you going to the book he's going to fight the roman it's not the roman coming to him <laughs> he said to him oh abu wahab would you not li li uh, like to have source of Byzantine women who is saying that muhammad in fact in arabic it says uh, 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 the daughter of, of the yellow so you can get the blondie they call them the yellow you know so attack the yellow attack the people the yellow people so we can get the blondie the yellow hair and this is written in their books so we are singling community to go in war and kill and the reason i am giving as a leader as a prophet to my men is to go and get the byzantine women in Islam, you go to war just because you want women. What is God? This guy is a prophet of God. He is seducing them, saying, Oh, Abu Wahab, would you not like to have like some women, Byzantine women, who they are company and like for sex and servant? Is that legitimate? Yes. And you are complaining about singling community, saying Muslims, they do problems, etc. This is your religion. You go to war, you kill people just to get to women who they are born. And this is a man who is inspired by God. The man who have honor, like your, not like your prophet, he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, my people know that I am very fond of women. And if I see a woman of the Byzantine, I fear not to be able to hold back. Well, you are going to take them. He just told you, you will take them as slaves for sex. <laughs> so don't tempt me with them. This is Islam. This is Islam. But yet they want to give us a speeches about what is right or what is wrong. How dare you to single community like the community of Muslims and say, Oh, you know, Muslim community, they do this and do that. Uh, if we go here, uh, 
the Quran, single community in large to kill them and justifying this killing of single in this community for a very simple reason they don't accept Islam chapter 9 verse number 29 and you can read any translation of any Abdul you wish all of it by the way is not accepted by me I'm reading it just because Muslim they will say oh he is changing the translation so I'm using Muslim translation so no one will say he is giving a wrong translation fight those who believe not on Allah nor the last day nor that hold forbidden which is heavy for the Allah and the messenger almost and the messenger so what is the reason to fight not to believe in Allah and the last day of Islam and what is forbidden by Muhammad and his God that's it so now we make 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 articles about not the single community speak about you know okay there's some Muslims do jihad and they do terrorism but you cannot say all Muslims do terrorism yeah, I agree not all of them because not all of them are convinced with Islam there's many of them they are Muslims by name but a true Muslim who believe in Islam he will do jihad and in Islam the jihad have many ways you know there's people who are sponsored by money there's people who are sponsored by food there's people who are sponsored by logistic uh, supply there's people who do jihad in the internet and there's people who do jihad by sword so playing some time and burning defensions the, the uh, defensions on uh, is a sure fire way and reminding of a fight against biotheorism blah 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 it's an argument have i heard from uh, made often the most recent being uh, conservative mp andrew or whatever uh, who when appearing in sky news discuss uh, Boris Johnson, but I don't want to read the names. Then you know they, they, you can read the article. They are saying simply that you know you label Muslims, all of them together, and this is not fair. But here they are saying that when you speak against Islam, you are speaking against a race. Even though the Abdul here he agree uh, that Islam is not a race, but he says that those people who say Islam is not a race, they are using that as an excuse to attack Muslims. You know, if I ask, uh, if I ask a Muslim, are you against racism and hatred? You will see right away, especially those who make article, they say to you, yes. All right, now let's see if this is true. When you say I'm going to kill the Christians and Jews, either they pay me money so they can live and they live and they are under my shoes as you see here until they pay the jizya with willing and submission as being subdued for a very simple reason because they don't accept Islam when you believe in the Quran as an example in chapter 5 verse number uh, uh, 14 where it says that Allah will spread hate and enmity singling community or well, actually all of those we see in front of us those verses is about singling community chapter 5 verse 14 it says what let us read together and singling community in which way in spreading hate imagine read with me from those who too who call themselves christians we did take a covenant but they forgot the good part of the message that was sent to them so we string them with enmity and hatred between one to the other so imagine i am going for election and i say i have a plan i am going to make hatred spread hatred between the muslims what the muslims will say about such a plan this is the political plan of allah allah have a plan and this plan will be until the judgment day what is the plan i'm going to spread hate between the christians are you against that for sure he will not dare to say no but the article says he is against racism and he is against hatred you see when you say the christians you make it racism too because if you are saying islam when the second you attack muslims it is racism well you are attacking christians that is racism then what is make all the christians under one frame is being a christians believers in christianity what make the muslims under one frame because they believe in islam so how come if somebody speak against Islam, 
Islam right away is going to be uh, uh, considered as racism attack on the Muslims. But when you attack the Christ Christians, not Christianity, really, you will be careful. This is not against Christianity, this is against Christians. The same as the verse we showed you, chapter 9, verse 29, to kill the Christians. If we go in the hadith, and this is a hadith we mentioned many times before. If you remember it. But let's see the, the, the civil teaching of, of Islam. How Islam looked to non-Muslims. You are the best of people ever. The Muslims, they have tons of articles speaking about the racist Jews and the racist Bible because the Bible says the Jews, uh, they are the best, uh, you know, God favor them. But actually the Quran says that too. I can show you the verses. The Quran says that Allah, he favored the Jews. And I will show it to you. But before we go there, Allah, he was saying, you are the best of people ever raised for the benefit of mankind. Here you will see the word benefit between two brackets because it's not exist really. And this is chapter 3, verse 110. But the Muslim trying to give you the, the meaning of this verse, the benefit. So when you hear the word benefit, you think, oh, that's good. You know, the Muslims, maybe they will make electricity. Uh, the Muslims will, uh, will uh, make life safer. Uh, they will provide food to mankind. They are, they are the best. Look, read with me carefully what the best is about. The best of mankind are those who do the following. Let us go here. The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Somebody, he is a Christian, claim to be a Christian because a Christian, he will not teach that. Says that we are Christians, the best of mankind and the best of us. Why we are the best? Because we are going to attack, you know, the Buddhas or the Muslims or the Hindus and put chains around their necks and force them to embrace Christianity. I saw many articles saying that the white man was an evil man because he forced Christianity on America. Hmm, interesting. So, hypocrites, Muslims. There's nowhere in the teaching of Jesus says anyone, he can force anyone to convert or to accept Jesus. This is something you do willingly. Uh, otherwise, uh, you, you convert no one because you force me to convert to Islam. In my heart, I don't believe in Islam. But this is your religion. The best of mankind is those who attack mankind and bring them like dogs. Because when you put the chain around their necks, that is a leech. That is a leech you put around an animal. So Islam, singling the whole world, it doesn't matter what community. And he singled one community out of this group. It's called Muslims. And he says they are the best of mankind. Okay, why they, why they are the best of mankind? What exactly they would do? They will provide us a solution for cancer. They will uh, discover how to feed the, the millions of hungry. No, they will attack you with the sword and they will bring you like a dog and they will put a chain around your neck. And this is because they are the best of mankind who try to save you from being a stupid idiot who don't believe in us now. So we attack you with a chain around your neck. We force you to convert to Islam. And this is to save you from the eternal punishment of hellfire. <laughs> Have you ever heard of such a hypocrite religion? And the funny, the Muslim, they keep saying to us, the Quran says that, you know, there is no conclusion of religion. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yeah, the Quran says that. I can show you the verse, my friend. Uh, the verse says that, that's, uh, you know... Uh, let us see together. Here we go. This is a verse the Muslims always they keep repeating to us, and this verse is absolutely false. The Muslims they don't give you the true meaning of it. Let us see what does that mean. If you read the translation, and this is a verse, as I said, the Muslim they use it almost every day to prove to you Islam don't force uh, 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 itself on anyone. Anyone have a freedom of a choosing religion. And the verse in the front of you, it says that. Let there is no conclusion in religion. Uh, truth stand out clear from error. But this is not what it says. This is about a group of people 
Muhammad he heard that some of the people, mostly the Jews or the people of uh, uh, the Kuffar, supposedly the one who don't believe in Islam, they are teaching their children not to convert to Islam. So Muhammad in response, he said, you cannot force your religion and the children, those, those people who might convert to Islam, the truth appear from the error. He was not saying you cannot force someone to convert to Islam. And just to show you, I am not making my own explanation. Let us go and see the, the, the interpretation for this verse from the mouth of the Abdul, not from me. We go here, chapter 2, verse number 256. <clears throat> and we we'll read together what the meaning of the verse. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Let us see if it's true or not. You see it? Here is speaking about that the women of the helpers, those boys always died in Ephesus. It used to vote, bring up boys as the Jews if they were uh, to alive and etc. So children of those people, they've been told that don't convert to Islam. And Muhammad he is saying, you cannot force your children not to convert to Islam for Islam is obviously is the truth and is going to appear stand clear in front of the error which the wrong we will not leave our children upon which allah exalted he revealed etc there is no comparison so this is about those people who they are trying to hold their children from converting to islam muhammad saying to them you cannot do that which means the opposite it's mean Muhammad, he is saying those who don't want their children to convert to Islam, you should let them convert to Islam. But Muhammad, he made it clear that anyone who leave Islam, kill him. There is no conclusion in the religion, etc. Okay, uh, this belief, uh, so whoever believes believe is false and, and they say it's written, blah, 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 blah. But if you go in details, as we showed you, it's about the children who their families are trying to hold them from accepting Islam as a religion. And this is have nothing to do about not forcing someone to convert to Islam. Because, as you know, the Quran had many verses speaking about killing and fighting those who don't believe in Allah. So how, how does it make sense? If you go in the Hadith, you will see this as an example. The one who changes religion, kill him. Okay, how the verse says, there's no, like, you know, you cannot force someone to convert to a religion and this verse and there is a hadith of Muhammad which is Sahih hadith very clear very 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 true uh, very authentic says that you anyone you see him he leave Islam kill him and do you see it all of those hadith are Sahih so I'm not we are not making things up as you see in the screen so how Islam don't force people to convert to religion and then anyone who don't who leave Islam, we kill him. That doesn't make sense. Obviously, the verse there have different meaning, as we showed you. So, Islam single community, single Islam Muslims first. As an example, when the Muslim Abdul here, he speak about singling Islam as a community or Muslim as a community is a is a is an act of racism. When when the Quran says in chapter three verse one out ten that you are the best of mankind, is that singling Muslims out of the world? Yes. What about Muhammad singling the Muslims to himself? Read with me carefully. Uh, let us see this one. <clears throat> You can read any of the hadith here. You see, I'm just uh, grabbing whatever is in my way. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter really which one. All of them are the same garbage anyway. Uh, but anyway, if you read with me here carefully, it says the Messenger of Allah said, the Jews split into 71 sect or 72. And the Christian similar, but my nation will be 73 sect. Okay. Obviously, Muhammad, he is singling community and he is speaking about community based on religion. If we go in the Quran, Muhammad, he singled the Jews to make them the most evil people ever. 
Now I know there are some many people they hate the Jews. I understand. I mean I understand the hatred. The hatred coming from ignorance because people they get jealous, the Jews are successful. So we hate the successful always. You know, I mean Bill Gates have billions. I have pennies. I will get jealous from Bill Gates. And if Bill Gates is Jew, I will say, see, the Jews controlling the world, but Bill Gates is not a Jew. Right? Yeah, but if he is a Jew, we will make we will blame the Jews. This is coming from Islam. If we go actually, as long as we are talking about this, if you go in the uh, uh, look how Muhammad he single community blaming them for everything. Read carefully with me and love about this cult. Have you ever heard of religion singling community that the meat we eat is damaged because of the Jews? How in the world this happened? It is in Abdul in the bushes can explain to us? Read please with me. The prophet said, but for the Israeli meat would not decay and for uh, 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 but for and, uh, and but for Eve, wives will never would never betray their husbands. So here we single not only the Jewish community, we single even gender. Why women betray their husband? Because of Eve. So Eve is a source of evil, and women they are the same as Eve. All of them they are bad. And here we blame even the Jews. Like why I have refrigerator in my house? Because of the Jews, as you see. The meat will not decay. So imagine somebody made an article saying, the title says, if not Muslims exist, meat would not decay. Imagine what the Muslims will say about such an article. You know what I mean? Can we make an article saying such a thing? And by the way, the Muslims, they say in line that the Bible blame Eve for the sin of Adam. <laughs> As you see, my friend, Eve is the one to be blamed in Islam for all the sin of mankind. And all women are the same as Eve. Actually, here, what, what it says, betray. What betray mean? What betray mean? It means women are, excuse my language, according to Islam, they are like a whore. She, you know, a, 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 a person who betray is a person who have no honor. This is what betrayal is about. So Islam claim that all women, starting from Eve, are equal to prostitute, equal to whore. They have no honor. They betray, actually, uh, who said that prostitute they will betray? They can be honorable more than Muhammad. Muhammad, he betray everybody around him. And we can prove it. But I'm just trying to, sh to show you the ideas Islam teach. Muslims, they try to give us a speeches about not to single community, but everything in this, in this cult is about singling community. Any Muslim can explain to us why Muhammad is saying such a thing. He could not find one single good Jew. I mean, from all the Jews in the world, not even one. So Muhammad, he knows that all the Jews are bad. Okay, but here we go. The Quran says about the Jews. Uh, let's switch to Arabic. <clears throat> if we go here, we will find uh, the following. Let us see. Uh, let us see. I want to show you, uh, let's, let's go here actually, this verse is, uh, is more clear. This verse is speaking about Jerusalem. Why Allah, he favored the Jews and he gave the land to the Jews. Ya qawm, udkhulu al-arda al-muqaddasa allati kataba Allahu lakum. Wa la tartaddu ala adbarikum fatanqaribu khasirin. What does that mean? 
chapter 5, verse number 21. You can read any translation you wish. However, we take Yusuf Ali as a try. Okay. But before we read it, Allah speaking about the Jews. Remember, Musa says to his people, All my people call in remembrance of the favor of Allah unto you when he produced prophet among you and made you kings and gave you what had not given to any other among the peoples. This is the most stupid religion. One verse saying that Allah, he favored the Jews and he gave them what he did not give to anyone. And the verse after it saying that the Jews are pigs and monkeys. In this verse, you will see how ugly this cult. O oh, my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned into you and turn not your back, etc. So Allah here supposedly saying to the, the it told Musa to tell the Jews, go and kill the Palestinians. How many articles written by Muslims against killing the Palestinians? And the Israeli are criminals and they are ugly and they are disgusting. My friend, this is the order of Allah according to Islam. It was Allah who ordered the Jews to attack the Holy Land. And it's called literally in the Quran as a Holy Land, Al Ardul Muqaddasa, which Allah has assigned into you. The Jews, they say this land is assigned to us. The Muslim today, they say, no, it's not. But read with me carefully, the Quran says that. So, how verse one verse in the Quran says the Jews are the most ugly enemy to Allah and the worst of the creatures and they are pigs and monkeys and here this is a verse saying that they are the best of the people and they are Allah assigned the holy land for them Muhammad he uh, as Muslims always explain to us Muhammad have a stages he is a scammer you know Muhammad when he speak to the Jews for long he was trying to convince them that he is a Jew like them when Muhammad speak to the Christians, he tried to convince them that he is a Christian. He speak to the Sabian, he claimed to be Sabian. You remember the story when Muhammad, he bowed down to the idols, the three daughters of Allah, and he said, uh, praying to them and their intercession is a must. But Muhammad at that time, he was praying in front of the those who worship those idols. In front of the Christians, Muhammad is a Christian. In front of the Jews, Muhammad is a Jew. In front of the Sabian, Muhammad is a Sabian. In front of the pagan, Muhammad is a pagan. The pagan kiss black stone, we kiss black stone. Okay, you know. The Jews believe that the Holy Land is assigned to them. Okay, we say that the Holy Land is assigned to you. No problem. Here we go in front of us. But then later, Muhammad, when he give up, none of the Jews want to believe in him. So what he will do? Kill them all. Allah cursed them. Suddenly they became pigs, monkeys, ape. And they are the worst of creatures and they are the most enemies and not only that muhammad he was trying uh, uh to to make the jews and the christians uh, uh, divided an enemy as an example if you read here <clears throat> all those verses actually you can read them and you will see but in this verse chapter 5 verse number 82 it's a very unique verse Muhammad in this verse he was trying to play the evil divider Strong, strongest among men in enmity to the believers will though find the Jews and the pagans okay so Muhammad now he single communities, anyone who don't believe in Allah, and specifically the pagans and the Jews are the most enemy to, to, to Islam and to Muslims. And then he said, and nearest among them in love to the believers is those who they are Christians. Like what the heck? What's wrong? There's something wrong here. Isn't it Muhammad who said just a few verses before that the Christians, you know, the, look, read with me carefully, guys. If we go in the same chapter, same chapter, just we go back to verse number 14. 
And let me go back fast to verse number 14. Do you see what it says? Allah will string enmity between them, hatred between them. And then he says that the most close to the Muslims and they love Muslims are the Christians. So why do you want to string enmity between them? <laughs> How we can match this verse with that verse down there? That's madness. But because the Quran, my friend, is not a book. The Quran is a shish kebab. It's like, you know, there's a, a guy who was running uh, in, in, the, in, in a busy street. And in his way, he started kicking tomatoes and potatoes and the seeds and beans and uh, cucumber and uh, corn and popcorn. And then after he kicked all those things in the ground, they start putting them, trying to put them together. This is why all those verses doesn't make sense. How here you want to string them with hate and enmity? And then in the other verse, he says the most people who love the Muslims are the one who call Christians. There's something wrong here. But simply, this is because Muhammad, he was trying to, uh, you know, be a hypocrite man. He noticed the Jews will not accept him anyway. So let us do this. Let us lie. Let us fool the Christians. Make them a Christian believe that we are not against them. And the Jewish are a small community. We make the biggest community happy against the minority because that will not hurt us anyway. The Jews, they cannot hurt. They are a small community. So strong them among, uh, strong among men in enmity, the believers, is those who they are Jews and pagans. And the nearest in love is the Christians. So the, we are the nearest in love. And you order the Muslim to kill us? And you are spread hate and enmity? Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? Because this man... He changed his command, depend on the occasion. Today he's weak. He sent, if you, I don't know if you're listening to the news about Erdogan. Erdogan, just a week ago, he was challenging Trump. Uh, we challenge America. Nobody come for us, Turkey. Blah, 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 blah. And today, Erdogan, he sent his minister to Trump like a puppy, begging him to stop his sanctions, the Turkish economy is collapsing. Trump, he destroyed Turkey by a tweeter, a tweet, not tweeter, tweet. People are out of money. The currency lost more than 50% of its value. So if Trump make one more tweet, the, the currency will, will, will lose 80%. The country is gone. So Erdogan, when he was weak, he convinced the atheist that he is not going to do any practice of religion. Actually, he signed documents saying, I'm not going to involve religion in this, uh, in the politics. But when he took over, he threw out all the atheists, he threw out all the liberals, he put them in jail, and now that's it, you cannot get him out. The only way to get him out is war. The second the Muslim to take a place, they will not leave. You see, all this election is a game. It's, it's not exist. There's no election. He, you know, he fired 40,000 people in one day. Just to be sure that nobody will be opposing him still working in any office, including post office man, including teachers, including garbage guy, including anyone who works for the government. He make a little statement against Erdogan, he's fired. One signature of 40,000 being fired, and that is Muhammad. Muhammad, when he is weak, he speaks differently. Muhammad, when he's strong, he speaks differently. Look how we, what he is saying now about the Christians. The Christians are the nearest people among people in love to the Muslims. Okay, let us go and see what Muhammad said later. later he said if I am victorious I am going to expel all the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula why you want to expel all the Christians who they are the most and nearest in love to the Muslims why because Muhammad he is saying the plan if I am victorious 
Are you deaf? Are you blind? If I am victorious, I will expel. So what is the requirement for Muhammad to be aggressive? Is to be victorious. And only Muslims can live here. So in the beginning, Muhammad was, you know, he don't want to expel anyone. He don't want to kill anyone, but because he was weak. But then, when he is strong, when he have an army, when he have swords, Muhammad, he made a vow that I will not let a single Christian or a single Jew live in the Arabian Peninsula. And you know what? If Muslims against hatred and against singular community, is it right to kill the whole community of the Christians in Saudi Arabia? Kill all the Christians, all the Jews in Saudi Arabia, kill all the non-Muslims? How come you don't make an article against your prophet do you agree really that we should expel people because of religion? I want to hear Muslims making a statement in the text, please. I want any Muslim to tell me how in the world you make an, an article speaking against racism when Islam is religion of racism. You see, Islam teaches that all people are one race who they are Muslims and all the other ones are kuffar, they are dirty. If you go in the Quran, the Quran singling the Muslims are the only clean nation. Read carefully with me, and this is again not my translation. Oh, you believe truly the pagans are unclean, so let them not after this year in their approach of the second mosque. And right now, if you go and search in Google, you will find that there is two cities. Christians and Jews and Hindus and Buddhas and pagan and uh, uh, whatever you name them, atheists are forbidden to enter. And if you enter, they will cut your head. Which city is that? Mecca and Medina. You see, the Muslims, they have articles against the white who discriminate the African in South Africa, who they have buses for the African and buses for the white. You have cities only for Muslims. The whole city, nobody is allowed to enter it. And what is the reason we are any clean? Imagine we put a sign in the highway of, uh, let us say, in Netherlands or uh, in France or in England or Germany or USA, says Muslims are any clean, therefore are not allowed to enter our city. And you are talking about singling community is a sign of hatred. hypocrisy, stupidity, and false information. If we, you know, like we can give endless examples of this garbage in the Quran, which is teaching hate. And what about not to take Christians and Jews as a friend? Is that singling community? You refuse to take us as a friend just because we are Christians. Why? All the Christians are not good for you. You could not find one good Christian for you. So one verse in the Quran says the most people who love Muslims are the Christians. Okay, as long as the most people who love Muslims are the Christians. Explain to me this verse then. Hmm? How this verse will function. We are the most people who love everybody. And this is true, the Quran witnessing that we are good, not you. All the verses in front of us is speaking that you cannot take non-Muslims as a friend. Chapter 3, verse number 28, and this is called the chapter of Taqiyah. And Taqiyah is a story, we'll show it to you later. Uh, if we go here, all those verses, by the way, you can ch check them one by one, like 4, 4, or 144, etc., you will see Islam teaching Muslims not to friend them Muslims. But I want to show you this verse specifically because this is speaking about me as a Christian. Chapter 5, verse number 51. 
Oh, who you believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and protectors. Okay, hold on. This Abdul, he was crying and flying over that somebody, when he speak against Islam, he is singling Muslim community. The second you speak against Islam, you are singling the Muslims. But the Quran, speaking about people, not about religion. The Quran says to the Muslims, and every Muslim have to follow and obey, that you cannot take Christians as friends. You cannot take the Jews as friends. So who is the one dividing community and singling community out? Islam singled the Christians and the Jews from all the world, saying to the Muslims, hold on, you cannot take them as a friends. You cannot even take them as a protectors. What does that mean? Which means if you are a person who live uh, in European country, you don't accept the leader of that country to be your leader. And the army of that country is your army because those are Muslims. Somebody will say to me, but Muslims, they live like in countries and they pay tax because they have no choice. But one day, if they take over, take over because they are not allowed to take you as a protector. As you see, it's not my words. It's in front of you. Take them not. However, a Muslim, he can take you as a friend as long as he is lying. If we go to chapter 3, verse number 28, and we showed you this verse many times before. This verse teaches the Muslims the same. You cannot take a Christians and Jews and non-Muslims as a friends, unless you are lying to them, claiming that you are their friend, but in fact you hate them. Take your time, you can freeze the computer, read it one word by word. Anyone who take the Christians and the Jews and non-Muslims as a friends, and he become mighty and honorable with them, which means he is sincere, the one who is sincere, Seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites and disbelievers as a friends has no connection with Allah. So the second you you know you accept me to be a friend and you are a Muslim, you are out of Islam. So how a Muslim he says to you, I'm your friend. As you see, this is not my words. The one is speaking here, by the way, the interpretation. This is the cousin of Muhammad, and this is the only named scholar by Muhammad. Muhammad did not name any other scholar for. Uh, uh, interpretation of the Quran except his, his cousin Ibn Abbas and this is Ibn Abbas so you cannot take them as a friend and if you take them as a friend you has no connection with Allah that's it you became an apostate and now there's a consequence of taking Christians and Jews as a friends not only you have no connection has no honor which means Muslims can rape your wife mercy protection Muslim can kill you they can chop your head from Allah, unless it be, ah, there's an exception, that you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, taking as it were security, saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them with while your heart dislike this. How in the world you Muslims believe in such an hateful, hypocrite cult? You cannot take me as a friend. Here the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, okay, if somebody arrest you, somebody want to kill you, aren't you willing to say to him anything? Well, hold on, hold on. This is not about somebody want to kill you. This is about somebody want to take you as a friend. Read carefully. Don't fool people with good lies. Let not the believers, huh? let not the believers take the believers out not to take the hypocrites. Take them out. Take them as a friends. So those people, they want to take you as a friends. They are not your enemy. The Muslim, they try to lie to you, says to say to you that this is about what? This is about somebody, he put a sword in your neck or he want to kill you, what you will say? Ah, you lie. Okay, makes sense. You know, I mean, you, well, what if you are a soldier in the American army and Taliban, they capture you? Are you going to tell them, uh, I want to kill you? You will say, no, I don't want to kill you. Please don't kill me. This is not what here. This is about people who want to take you as a friend. Not about people who want to kill you. So what is the point of lying to them saying I'm your friend? Because you guard yourself against them. What does that mean? In this time, we Muslims are a small community and we cannot force Islam on others and we cannot say the truth. We cannot say I want to kill you. We cannot say we will take over you. We cannot say we want to force you to do this. So what we do? We guard ourselves speaking in a friendly way 
but our heart dislike this. This is a clear proof that Islam is a satanic cult. It teaches you to have two faces. One face speaking that you are a good person, you love the people, you are one of them, you take them as a friends and you love everybody. And the other face is in your heart is dislike this. And if you are, if your heart is like this, you are a good Muslim. Which means, if you are a liar, you are a good Muslim. If you are a person who practice hypocrisy, you are a good Muslim. If you are a Muslim who says, I love America, I love German, I love English people, you are a good Muslim. As long as you don't mean it. As long as your heart is like this. But if you mean it, if you mean it, and you became mighty and honorable in the preference to believers who are sincere those who does that seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites and disbelievers as a friends has no honor with allah no connection with allah so what is the guilt now to leave islam think carefully why you will have no connection to allah because you became a friend to christian friends you became a friend to a guy his name is john george that's haram you cannot, unless you are lying to him. So when the Muslim is speaking about singing in community, I find it very disgusting lie, because it is you who single every community. It is you who single yourself, that you are the best of mankind. And with the rest are garbage. We are dirty, we are pigs, we are monkeys, we are worst of creatures, we are the evil doers, we are everything ugly. And yet, they want to give us a speeches about who is good and who is bad. So I want people to be aware of the Muslim games when they try to, to play the victims. You know, if you go in the West, like in this, uh, in this uh, article, he says there's many Muslims, they're, 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 they reject to give them jobs because of their name. <laughs> this is not a true. It might be that if they know that you are a Muslim, they reject you. But this is not because of you are just a Muslim. Because they give you the job today. You apply for a job without hijab. Tomorrow you come with hijab. But the religious symbolic is not allowed in this company. So what do you do? Second day you make a scandal. And you sue the company. Okay, you apply yesterday wearing no hijab. Why today you are wearing hijab? Because today I'm accepted. Taqiyya. So she come without hijab. She apply for the job. Her name is Fatima. They give her the job. They know she is a Muslim. But everything is fine. You know, she is going by the rules. They give her the job. Two days after she takes the job, she came wearing burqa. And then the scandal will start. Oh, they fire me because I'm wearing burqa. You know, they play victims. This is the truth. When the Quran, as an example, in chapter 5, verse number 60, is speaking that the, uh, they are the worst of the creatures and they are pigs and monkeys. Uh, 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 when the Quran says that the most, that, that all, all those who don't accept Islam are animals, uh, all those verses in front of us is, is in front of you. You can check them verse by verse. I'm just scrolling down, you know. It's, it is disgusting. It is ugly. And I don't know really how a Muslim can give us a speech about being good. In the Ladina Kafaru, in Ahl al Kitab, Wal Mushrikin, Finari Jahanna Makhaida Fiha, Wulaika Hom Sharul Baria. What is that? 98, verse number six. What is what it says? Translation, please. Those who reject the face among the people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews, and the poorest, but they will be in the hellfire to do what their end for I, and they are the worst of creatures. <laughs> and and why we are the worst of the creatures? Because we reject Islam. Look at this. And they make an article about not to single any community. So my friend, Islam is a religion of hypocrisy and hypocrites. And only hypocrites believe in hypocrisy. Nothing truthful in this cult. It have not a face. It have many faces. Because Muhammad is the man of many faces. He is a Jew with a Jew, 
Christian with the Christian, you know, Sabian with the Sabian, pagan with the with the pagan, and he have no religion. Islam, when somebody tried to make Islam as a religion, I laugh because Islam is religion of religions, which means Islam, Muhammad to establish himself, he needed some from the Christians, some from the Jews, some from the Sabian, some from the pagan Arabs. So he took from them the Kaaba, he took from them the black stone, he took them from a Safa and Marwa, which is nothing but a sexual uh, status people used to worship. He took from the Jews, Musas. He took from the Christians, Jesus. He took from the Sabi and the, 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 the month of Ramadan, uh, uh, the, the five-time prayer. He took from everybody because he have nothing. He is just a cult founder. I remember once a Muslim said, well, you know, we Muslims are the most safe people. I said, why? He said, if the Jews were right, we believe in Moses, so we will be safe. If Jesus, the Christians were right, we believe in Jesus, so we will be saved. And if Muhammad was right, we believe in Muhammad, so we are saved. My friend, even the Quran says you are not saved. And the Quran says that all Muslims will go to hell. وَمَا مِنْكُمُ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Not a single one of you, but he will enter hell fire. He will enter it and he will drink from it. As you see, chapter 19, verse number 71. Not a single one. Here you see the Muslim says, pass over it. That's a big fat lie. Nowhere it says that. You see, this is why if you want to read the translation of Muslims, you learn nothing about Islam reading. Chapter 19, verse number 71. Let us go here. And see what this verse is saying. <clears throat> Do you see it, guys? In the translation, it says, You will pass over it. Here it says, There's not one of you, but shall come to that, is, but shall enter hell. Do you see it? That is the true meaning. The translation, they lie to us. They say, pass over it. There's nobody. Not a single Muslim, you will not go to hell. Mad, stupid religion. How you promise them heaven and etc. And then you go, you know. And Muhammad, in different places, he make that the most uh, uh, like uh, inhabitant people of, of hell the women. Uh, <clears throat> we see here Muhammad saying the following. And the purpose of uh, attacking the women and make them believe that the most of them they will go to hell, Muhammad, he want to take their earring and he want to take their jewels. You know? This is the whole point. He want to take their money. You see all of those you see in the front of you? Muhammad is saying to them, give me your money if you want to go, if you don't want to go to hell. So he scared the hell of them in order to make the women give their jewelries. Read carefully. So now he's single community of women, with me by gender, saying all of you will go to hell. After Muhammad, he observed the prayer, blah, blah, blah. He came and he walked in front of women. He walked and he uh, entered, he came to women and, and preached to them and admonished them and asked them to give alms. Right away, give alms, why? I mean, teach us something. Right away, give them alms. For most of them, they are the fuel of hell. Oof, why? Women are the fuel of hell, why, why? What is the reason? And so if we give alms, that will save you from going to hell. I mean, look at the logic. So give alms. <laughs> and who is give arms to who to Allah and who is the who is Allah Muhammad look and then a woman having dark spot in cheeks stood up and said why it's so much of Allah he said for you uh, grumble often and you show ingratitude to your spouse 
and then they began to give alms out of their uh, jewelries, such their earring and rings, uh, which they throw in the cloth of Bilal. The Muslim, they say to us, the first uh, black person who converted to Islam is Bilal. That's not true, by the way. But Bilal is a poor slave. Yes, as you see, he, he woke with Muhammad. He's the, he's, the, he's the back carrier. He is a slave. And now Muhammad, he scared the hell of those women. You, you give alms. You will go to hell. Okay, okay. Now we give you our earring. Are we going to go to heaven? Yes. <laughs> by the way, I have a website for donation. So if you women like to give your earring, <laughs> this is exactly what's happening. It's a scam. So he scared the hell of those poor women, saying to them, the most of you will go to hell. So give me your earring, give me your ring before it's too late. And now supposedly after they give him the earring and the rings, they are saved and they are now in heaven and they are eating watermelon. I mean, how in the world this religion work? Everything in it about singling community, you just single the women that just because they are women, they will go to hell. Muhammad, he could not find most of the women go to hell. Why? Is that something connected to their gender? Yes. That's why Muhammad, he said in different hadith we showed to you just a few minutes ago, that if there is no Eve, there's no female betray her husband. And the funny, the Muslim, they say we don't believe in the in the in the original original sin. But here we go, Muhammad believed in the original sin. He just said if there is no Eve, and by the way, original sin is not about only Eve. Original sin is about Adam and Eve commit sin. But Islam teach that original sin goes to Eve. Yet the Muslim, they say we don't believe in original sin. It's stupid. So I encourage all the Muslims to start giving their earring, especially the females. And don't forget uh, to give your uh, lingerie, which you bought from Victoria's Secret to Muhammad. Uh, but in this case, you better wear it and come to him. Because even Muhammad here, he accepted donation as sex. Have you ever heard of such a donation? Yes. Muhammad, he accepts all kind of donation, specifically money and sex. Here, in this chapter in front of us, Chapter 33, verse number 50, Muhammad, he said, any woman she give herself to the prophet so the prophet can do bing bong with her, she's welcome. And why in the world a believing woman she want to give herself to the prophet? The prophet have 13 wives already. I mean, is that will make Muhammad strong in war with the disbelievers? Is that will make Muhammad feel better? Is that will make Muhammad wiser? I mean, why Allah is saying such a verse? Any believing woman, she want to give herself as a gift. And the Muslim, they lie. They say, uh, this is for marriage. Well, what marriage says in Nukah? To F her. And as you see, it's only privilege to thee. Only to thee. I mean, why Muhammad have a, such a privilege? You see, the Muslims, they attack Paul day and night. Imagine Paul says, any Christian woman, she can sleep with me. And this is God told me it's a privilege to me. If Paul, he said that, we will throw rocks at Paul and we will spit on him. How come you Muslim don't see it? Do really Muhammad need such a privilege? What is the purpose of this privilege? God Almighty in the seven eleven heaven, he is thinking, hmm, what I will give Muhammad today? What I will give him today? Big screen TV, he don't like it. Mm. PlayStation, he don't even know how to use it. Watching YouTube, he don't even have internet. He's an Arab. They will not even have it in two, you know, 14 centuries from now. So what I will give him, what I will give him. Shish kebab, he ate all the shish kebab of the Christians. He killed them and he took their goats. Ah, I will give him a lot more virgins and women to have sex with him. <laughs> this is more fun and that will keep him busy from doing more stuff. That is God, and this is a religion. How you can believe in such a cult. I'm not going to keep you longer, guys, but I apologize for not doing podcasts for a while. As I said, uh, my internet was really horrible, and now we have a better internet. I will try, if I can, tomorrow to do podcasts. I will. Uh, anyway, yeah, you will be announced. Uh, I will post about it. So you guys, you can see if I have any coming broadcasts soon.
please don't forget to download my videos and share them. I know that this video is very long, but you can download the shorter one or you can cut, cut the pieces and share with your friends. And let me make it clear. We hate no one. And me as a Christian, I've been ordered to love everybody, including the Muslims. Muslims are people like us, and they are victims of a cult. It's called Islam. So we are here to help them, not to put them down, not to insult them. You know, I believe if I am doing wrong, and my somebody claimed to be friend, but he never told me I'm doing wrong, or he never tried to correct me, I think this person is very hateful. You know, from time to time, one of you, he posts, he says, CP, this is wrong spinning. I will never get upset from such a person. I will say to him, thank you, because he's correcting me. And imagine here the mistake is not a big deal. I mean, it's a spinning, right? What about a person he want to show you the truth? He is, he, he for sure, he don't hate you. What about a person he is even risking his life to save you? We know how aggressive Islam is and how, how hateful it is, this cult. We know that the one who insult the Prophet, he, uh, the Muslims have a duty to punish him and the penalty is death if they can do it. Still, there is people, they want to save the Muslims because simply they love the Muslims, not because they hate them. If I compare, and may the Lord forgive me for comparing, between the teaching of Muhammad, who said, Allah gave me a privilege of women giving, the, giving me the vagina, and Jesus, who said, uh, you know, like uh, everything, everything is about him, is about you, for you, not nothing for him. What the money Jesus he took? What the property he took? What the reward he took? What the reward he asked for? If the Muslim believe in Jesus as a prophet, how in the world, for the sake of argument, let us say Jesus is a prophet, how you leave someone like Jesus and you follow someone like Muhammad? You see, you don't want to believe in Jesus as, as God? No problem. But how in the world? Where's your brain? Isn't it obvious that this man is making fun of you? Imagine you are standing now in front of Muhammad and he is saying to you that Allah, he gave me right now a, 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 a verses saying any woman, including your wife, she can give herself to me. In the interpretation of this verses, the Muslim they says, uh, Ibn al-Arabi said uh, that the Prophet he been given 16 to 20 privilege and in about this privilege here about women giving themselves to the Prophet he said if the Prophet his eyes fall into a woman her husband he have to divorce her immediately and this is exactly what happened with Muhammad when he forced his own son to divorce his wife and the name of this man, he is even mentioned in the Quran because of that story. Imagine a prophet of God. He could not find a woman to sleep with except the one he adopted as a son. And this is, can be found in chapter 33, verse number 37. If you read the story there, you will see that Muhammad, he went to the house of Zainab when Zaid was not there and he flirted with the wife according to the Muslim stories I believe already he's speaking with her and he said to her praise be to Allah the one who make my heart beat for you according to Zainab since Muhammad he said that each time her husband he tried to sleep with her Allah make the penis of the husband swell it's a miracle even the miracle of Muhammad is about penises so now the husband, he want to sleep with his wife. But now, because Muhammad, he flirted with the women, Allah will not let the husband sleep with the wife. So what he do, Allah? Allah closed the door of the van on the penis of Zaid. The penis of Zaid became big and swelled, very painful, so he cannot use it. Next second day, Zaid, he tried to sleep with his wife again. Allah, he made the penis of Zaid swell again. It must be a true story. I mean, this is a true story. This is a true prophet. Do you think Allah will allow Zaid to have sex with his wife after the prophet, he's, he flirted with his wife? No way. That's it. He reserve it. <laughs> and actually, this is the reason I'm not married yet. Because what if I get married and Muhammad, he saw my wife, and I go to have sex with my wife, 
do you want Allah to close the door of the van over my come on that's not this this is really really scary so this is amazing I mean the, the, the madness and look how faith he even their books how in the world a woman her name is Zainab she is a wife of a prophet she says since the prophet he flirted with me each time my husband tried to sleep with me his penis is swell how in the world even Muslims accept that to be even written in their books imagine now uh, I'm married and my wife she come here and she say guys uh, a prophet of Allah he saw me yesterday and since yesterday each time uh, CP tried to do <laughs> And he and and obviously she is telling this story to the public. I mean, it's a miracle. I mean, don't you believe in Muhammad's prophet? Look, let me tell you a story. For sure, Muhammad is a prophet. Muhammad come to my house. He flirted with me. I was wearing see-through clothes. He saw my legs. He saw my you know. And then after he flirted with me and he told me like I like you and uh, Allah he flipped my heart for you. <laughs> yeah, you know. Since then, my husband his penis is done. You know. I mean, it's a miracle. While Jesus was making the blind see, making the one who cannot walk, walk, raising people from death, healing all kinds of diseases, Muhammad God making penises swell because the vagina of Zainab is reserved to Muhammad. This is how stupid this God. I don't know how smart are you, I don't know how stupid are you, whoever is listening. Use your brain if you have one. With this, I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. And please subscribe so you will be updated with our coming broadcast. I will try to do tomorrow if I can. And those we appreciate those who help us in donation. But don't give me earring like Muhammad or rings. <laughs> Save it for something else. Thank you, guys. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord and Islam is false. And me to that. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.